Now, strangely, I can never understand this. Students get KNN confused with K-means. And I don't know why they do this, because these techniques have nothing in common. Except that maybe if you just squint just right, these two ends together look like an M. That is about it. That is all these techniques have in common. So let's see what K nearest neighbors is. It is part of a class of algorithms called lazy learning. Oh, so cute. And what is lazier than having your recipe be the whole data set? I'm not going to bother to summarize it for you. I'm just, just use the whole thing. So let me show you an example. Here is a desk area. We've got engineers and managers sitting in this desk area. We have the north-south coordinates and the east-west coordinates. And we'll see this thing in action with k equals 5. So now the technique reads 5 nearest neighbors. You have no idea what's coming. That k, by the way, it is a hyperparameter. And so we'll need to tune it, and we'll see that shortly. But for now, meet Heather and Sophie. That's where they sit. And we will use five nearest neighbors to diagnose them as engineer or manager. First, Sophie, we will find her five nearest neighbors in space. There they are. And all we do is we say, what's the most common label? Let's give her that label. So we say she is an engineer. Then we do the same thing for Heather. And that manager is just, just closer than this engineer. And so Heather gets the manager label. Now, of course, K matters a hang of a lot, which is why you will want to do hyperparameter tuning. And the way you can tune it is simply the start at one, go to two, go to three, if you wish to. Hyperparameter tuning is easy for this case. It gets hard when you've got lots of different hyperparameters that you have to deal with, and it takes a long time to rerun your model, and now you can't just brute force find the right answer. Now, let's look at the effect of k. If we set k to 15, there is nowhere that poor Heather can hide. She will get the engineer label just simply because there's more engineers. If we set k equals 1, and we have my desk nearby, and I'm a decision scientist, then, or statistician, or whatever I am, then poor Heather gets that same title, decision, whatnot, even though there's only one of me. And so, K equals one is where you get judged by your one weirdo best friend rather than the diversity of the friendships that you hold. So you will want to tune and see what's actually working for you. So this has nothing to do with k-means. This is a supervised learning technique. All the following techniques will be supervised learning. It was only k-means that was unsupervised in this list. So when do we try it first? If we've got labels, they can be any labels. They don't have to be categories. They can also be numbers. We can find my five nearest neighbors and use them to predict salary by finding the median salary among those nearest neighbors, right? Same kind of reasoning. And of course, we don't only have to do geographical stuff with it. We can say, who are my nearest neighbors in the audience in terms of shoulder width, maybe, and torso length, and we can use that for sizing a t-shirt use that to predict t-shirt size. And it doesn't just have to be two features. We can do this for more features, but careful. This really requires a tall, skinny data set. It doesn't like situations where you've got too many features and not enough instances. It really suffers from what is called the curse of dimensionality. So what is that thing? Such a machine learning term, it's great.